the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is a formula that we can use to solve any quadratic equation. We've talked about some other methods for solving quadratic equations, one being factoring, and that's the easiest method, but not all quadratic equations can be factored. We've talked about the square root method, but not all quadratic equations can be solved by using the square root method. But we can solve any quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. And this is the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you Google quadratic formula song, um, there's all different kinds of songs. People have put this uh, formula to all different, <clears throat> different uh, tunes. And so if you Google it, you're, you're sure to find a lot of different things um, that this comes up under. Um, so let me just show you one, or let me sing for you one of those tunes. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that's just one tune, um, and whatever you decide to do or whatever tune you decide to memorize it to, um, doesn't matter, but it is an important formula and you will use it not only in this class, but in future math classes also. So uh, memorize this formula. Now to use the quadratic formula, we have to get our quadratic equation in general form. And general form of a quadratic equation is this. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. And the coefficient or the number in front of x squared is a, the coefficient of x is b, and the constant is c. And we just pull out those numbers and plug them into the quadratic formula and simplify to solve. Now, we can determine what or how many and what types of solutions we're going to have um, by looking at what's called the discriminant. The discriminant is all of this under the radical once it's simplified to a single number. So that is the discriminant. And depending on what that number is, that will tell you the number and types of solutions that you'll have. If the discriminant is positive, then, then you'll have two real solutions. If the discriminant is zero, then you'll have one real solution. And if the discriminant is negative, then you'll have no real solutions. Okay, let's use the quadratic, if, uh, the quadratic formula to solve the quadratic equation. When we look at this quadratic equation, it's already in standard form. So we can go ahead and pull out a, b, and c. Remember, a is the coefficient of x squared. So if I don't see anything in front of x squared, we know it's understood to be a 1. For b, my coefficient is going to be the coefficient of x, which is 5. And then c is my constant, which is negative 6. Make sure you pay attention to the signs of the numbers. All right, so that's a negative 6. So I'm going to plug it into the quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b. So negative, and my b is 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 6, all over 2 times a, which is 1. Okay, so now I need to simplify by using order of operations. Well, order of operations tells me that I need to um, work with, so please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, stands for, uh, the P, the please stands for um, parentheses, but it's not just parentheses, it's anything that groups numbers together. That includes a radical. 
So since we have that square root and it's grouping all of those numbers underneath it together, we need to do that first. Well, if we look under the radical, we have two things going on. This 5 is being raised to a power, and then this negative 4 and 1 and 6 are being multiplied together. We need to do that before we add or subtract those two separate groups. All right, so that's what we're going to do first. Um, first of all, negative, and then I plugged in a 5, so that's negative 5. Then we have plus or minus. Okay. So 5 squared would be 25, and then like I said, I need to multiply all the rest of that stuff together. That's negative 4 times 1 times 6, which would be negative 24. Oh, I plugged in a, a positive 6. That should be a negative 6. All right, I'm glad I caught that. Okay, so negative 4 times 1 times negative 6, that would be a positive 24. All right, and then that's all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, and I get negative 5. Now I can add or subtract those two numbers that are under the radical, um, which would be 49. Okay, I'm going to pause there for just a second because, like I said, once that number under the radical um, gets simplified to a single number, that is the discriminant. So my discriminant is 49. Now, since my discriminant is positive, that tells me I'm going to have two real solutions. Um, if, my, if it's a perfect square, then I'm going to have two real rational solutions. If it were not a perfect square, I would have two real irrational solutions. So I know I'm going to have two real rational solutions. So let's go ahead and finish working this out. All right, so 49 is a perfect square, and the square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so since I have all whole numbers, no radicals, I need to separate this and work this out and get my two separate solutions. All right, so this is negative 5 plus 7 over 2. Okay, so negative 5 plus 7 would be 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay, so one of my solutions is 1. But I also have negative 5 minus 7, because it was plus or minus 7 over 2. So that's a negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6. So those are my two real rational solutions, 1 and negative 6. All right, let's look at another one. This equation is not in standard form. So to get it in standard form, everything needs to be on one side and it needs to be in descending order. So I need to move this one over to the other side. And that gives me x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. All right, so my a, the coefficient of x squared, is 1. b would be negative 2. And c is positive 1. All right, if we plug it into the quadratic formula, x equals negative b. Okay, b is negative 2. Anytime my b is negative, make sure that you use parentheses when you plug it in because if not, it's going to cause you to make some mistakes. All right, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Okay, so here's another place I need to put it in parentheses. So b squared, that would be negative 2 in parentheses squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1 all over 2 times a. All right, negative, negative 2, that would be 2, plus or minus the square root. All right, again, remember, I want to keep reminding you, we do these two things first. We square that, and we multiply all of this together. Okay, so if I square negative 2, I get a positive 4. 
And if I multiply negative 4 times 1 times 1, I get negative 4. All over 2 times 1, which is 2. And I keep saying all over because the whole numerator, the 2 plus or minus the square root of whatever, in this case it would be 0, um, is all over that denominator. Okay, Not just part of it is being divided by 2a. All right, so then I have x equals 2 plus or minus 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay, so let's pause there. My discriminant is 0. All right, so we said that if the discriminant was 0, we would have how many solutions? One real solution. Okay, so let's see. I have x equals 2. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, and if I add 0 or subtract 0, it doesn't change anything. So on top, I just have a 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So I have one solution. My solution is 1. All right, here is another one. It doesn't matter if I take the x squared and move it over to this side of the equation, or if I take the 8x and the 11 and move it over to the other side of the equation. Either way, I'll end up with the same answers. All right, so just to make it to where we only have to move one term, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. And that gives me 0 equals negative x squared plus 8x plus 11. All right, so my a in this case would be negative 1. My b is 8. And my c is 11. All right, let's plug it into the quadratic formula. x equals negative, my b is 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 8 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is 11, all over 2 times a, which is negative 1. All right, so negative 8 plus or minus the square root. All right, so I'm going to multiply or raise this to the power and then multiply all of this stuff together. All right, so 8 squared is 64. Then negative 4 times negative 1, that'd be a positive 4. 4 times 11, that would be plus 44. And that's over negative 2. Okay, so x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 108 over negative 2. So, we have simplified the um, radicand to a single term, and we get 108, so that's my discriminant, 108, and that is not a perfect square, but it's positive, so I know that I'm going to have two real solutions, but they're going to be irrational, um, alright, so I have two real solutions, let's see what they are, um, 108 is not a perfect square, but it has the biggest perfect square factor of 108 is 36. So 36 times 3 is 108. And 36, the square root of 36 is 6. And both of those terms, the, both whole numbers in the numerator, the 8 and the 6, can be divided by negative 2. So as long as both terms can be divided by the denominator, we can do that. Um, so if I divide both terms by negative 2, I get 8 plus, no, not 8. 
8 divided by 2, I would get 4 plus or minus 3 square root 3. We only divide the whole numbers by that negative 2, um, not what's under the radical. All right, so that would be my two uh, irrational solutions, 4 plus 3 squared to 3 and 4 minus 3 squared to 3. All right, we have one more. This is a quadratic equation, but if you'll notice, it's only got two terms. It's in descending order. It's in standard form. Everything's on one side, and it's going from the largest to the smallest exponent. So it's in the right order. All right, so let's go ahead and pull out a, b, and c. Well, a we know is the coefficient of x squared, so my a is 2. b is the coefficient of x. Well, we don't have an x term, so my b would be 0. And c is my constant, so c is 8. So when we're doing a quadratic equation, it's possible for the b to be 0. If we don't have an x, then the b is 0. It's possible for the c to be 0. If we don't have a constant term, then our c would be 0. The only thing that cannot be 0 is a, because we have to have that x squared term, or it's not a quadratic equation, and we can't use a quadratic formula to solve it. All right, so let's plug these numbers into the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, so I have this negative 0 in front. Well, negative 0, there's, not, there's no such thing as a negative 0. And 0, if I add or subtract 0 to anything, it doesn't change it. So we don't have to write that 0 anymore. So this is just plus or minus. 0 squared is 0. And then if I multiply negative 4 times 2 times 8, I get negative 64 over 4. Okay, so that's plus or minus the square root of negative 64 over 4. So my discriminant is negative 64. And if we have a negative discriminant, then we have no real solutions. And we don't have to go any farther because we don't have any real solutions. And that's it.